Welcome to this Bespoke Stairlifts installation manual. In this video, we will cover all the stages of the installation process, from pre-installation checks, track fitting, through to cleanup and demonstration. By following the steps in this video guide and the Infinity installation manual, you'll be able to quickly and efficiently install a bespoke stairlift to the highest standard and reduce future faults and callouts. Stage 1 Installation Check and Unboxing Kit Using the installation drawing in your installation kit, assess the staircase, making sure all measurements and dimensions are correct. Check for any obstacles that may hinder installation, such as low ceilings, bulkheads, skirting and dado rails. These may or may not be on your drawing. When unboxing the installation kit, make sure to check that all items on the list are included. And you have all your tools to hand. When unpacking the rails and bases, take care not to damage the paintwork. Organise the bases with the tags provided, starting with one at the foot of the stair. Clarify with the customer any existing wires or pipework, so no damage is caused when installing the stairlift. Stage 2. Track Installation Fit the 8mm grub screws to each of the leg bases, making sure they do not project into the inside of the base. Then place the bases in the position shown in the installation drawing. Starting at the top of the stairs, place each rail section on the stairs in the correct leg base. Using the cable feeder, Start by feeding the two core charging cable through the lower tubing of each rail section, starting at the top and working down. Ensure a minimum of 150 millimeters of cable at each end. Adjust the rail sections and bases to approximate height using the installation drawing. Gently tighten the grub screws on each base. These will need to be adjusted later. Then, working from the bottom, fit the first two sections together, making sure to grease the male part of each joint. Finally, pin together the rails using the rolled steel pins. Be careful not to snag the two core charging cable. Repeat the process on each joining section until the rail is level and fully assembled. Take time in cleaning away any excess grease. Once the track is in the appropriate position, fit and secure jointing bolts to fasten each rail together. Level each rail section by untightening the grub screws in the bases. Ensure the track is level and the bases sit on the steps. Then re-tighten. Repeat this on each section. Once the stairlift rail is complete, double check all rail heights, clearances and angles and that the lower and upper rails are vertically level. Finally, ensure rail-to-wall measurements match the installation drawing. When you are happy that the stairlift is in the correct position, individually loosen the grub screws on each of the base collars and secure each leg base to the staircase using the preferred fixing method. Failure to loosen the grub screws when fixing may cause the rail to move. Tighten the grub screws back up and repeat on each leg plate, ensuring the rail is still level. Stage 3 – Power Supply Firstly, determine the most suitable location for the charger unit next to the power supply. Pre-drill the holes to fix the charging unit to the wall, taking care the unit is level. 
leave sufficient length on the power output to enable easy connection to the rail charge points. The power supply unit should not be plugged into the mains until the rail charge points have been connected. Stage 4 – Carriage Assembly and Programming First, unpack all the pre-assembled units from their packaging, taking care not to place the carriage on the floor, avoiding damage. To install the batteries, first remove the front panel by unscrewing the four main screws. Once you've inserted the batteries, consult your instruction manual, making sure the battery circuit is correct. Next, insert the long loading bar into the top skate of the carriage and insert the small cone stopper into the bottom rail tube. At the top of the stairs, lift the carriage with the loading strap and insert the loading bar into the top rail tube. Slowly run the carriage along until the small cone is through the bottom skate. Once the carriage is securely located on the rail, it is safe to let go of the loading strap. You can now begin to install the seat to the carriage. First. Lift the seat above the carriage and feed the joystick cable down through the hole located in the seat boss plate. Before lowering the seat down onto the plate, ensure to feed all the cable through when doing so to prevent the cable getting trapped under the seat frame. If the lift is a manual swivel, you must ensure the locator on the swivel lever is passing through the aperture in the boss. This is not required on a powered swivel. Now line the holes up on the seat frame down to the boss plate below. Fix with the two shorter bolts towards the front of the seat, the two longer ones to the back. It is important to consult your installation manual to make sure the correct screws are located correctly and correct Loctite is used on each thread before tightening. You can then connect the joystick cable to the PCB cable, which is located inside the chassis above the upper battery, making sure the two cables are free to move as the chair rotates. The front battery cover can now be fixed back on. Insert the key into the arm and turn to the in position. The carriage is now ready to run on the rail. Switch on the lift by pressing the orange switch on the front of the carriage to the on position. Remove the PCB cover for access to the programming buttons and to have a clearer view of the LCD screen. The lift should come set up correctly ready for programming, but this can be checked by going through the menu function on the screen. The lower scroll button is used to cycle through the menu options and the top adjust button to change an option. For example, scroll to the swivel option and press the adjust button to choose manual or powered. It is best to check through all these beforehand to make sure everything is set up correctly. The lift will not run unless in program mode or already programmed to the rail. To put the lift into program mode, press the scroll button until you see position. This is the first option you come to if scrolling from the home screen. Then press and hold the scroll button and this will change to Program LO1500. You are now in program mode and able to drive the lift onto the rail. Run the chair to a desired position on the rail so you are now able to start mounting the charging points. Return to the rail and fit the charge points to both the top and bottom. Connecting the core cable at both ends Use the diagram on page 18 of the installation guide to ensure correct polarity. Once you are happy with the positions, fasten the final end stop brackets at the top and bottom of the rail. When placing the final end stops and charging points, please ensure the lower skate of the carriage does not touch the floor before engaging with the final end stop. This could result in damage to the skate mechanism. If the distance is incorrect, you may need to adjust the charging terminal. When the charging terminals are engaged, make sure there is only 5mm to 10mm gap between the final end stop and the lower skate, as overrunning the charging terminals may result in the carriage losing its memory. Finally, turn on the charger. Closely follow the diagram shown to ensure the correct polarity of the charging terminals when connected to the charging cable. Stage 5. Programming. 
The remotes will come already pre-programmed to the lift. Should you need to program them, turn the lift off and on again. Then within the first five minutes of the lift being switched back on, press and hold all three buttons on the remote control for three seconds. Repeat the process again for any additional remote controls. The remotes will now be paired to this lift. Next, to program the stair lift, put the lift into program mode and begin to run it down the bottom charge point, making sure the charger is turned on before making contact. If you have an intermediate charge point, turn the charger on when you are below this so that the bottom charge point is the first in which the lift detects. Once the lift reaches the charge point, it'll stop automatically and the counter will reset to a number around 1000. This is the datum point in which the lift will count from. The LO number shown on the screen is the speed the lift will travel after programming. Press the adjust button to change to high to program the lift to full speed. The speed can be changed at any point on the lift as you travel up to the top charge point by pressing the adjust button again to select between high and low. This will only need to be adjusted on internal curves. Now begin to drive the lift up to the next charge point, where the lift will again stop by itself when it detects the charge point. If this is an intermediate, drive the lift up again until you reach the top. Once the lift has stopped on the last charging point, press and hold the scroll button again until position is shown on the screen again. The lift is now programmed to the rail. Stage 6 safety and troubleshooting. Here we are going to check the stopping safety features. First, move the stair lift to a convenient position. Now run the stair lift, placing your hands in front of each sensor, individually running the lift both up and down the rails. Should the overspeed governor engage, follow these steps to reset the system. Turn off the stair lift. Then, using the manual winding handle, wind the stair lift in the upward direction. The OSG arm should become loose from the rail. Move the OSG arm into the neutral position. Your system will now be reset. The Display Diagnostics The Display Diagnostics feature can inform the engineer of any problems that the Infinity stair lift has encountered during installation or in general use. Depending on the problem, the Infinity stair lift displays a selection of error messages to indicate what the problem is, enabling the engineer to pinpoint the fault and resolve it quickly without the need for elimination of other potential faults. Stage 7 – Cleanup and Finishing Touches As many of your customers will be elderly, make sure you clean away any tools, packaging and rubbish before giving the customer a demonstration. Make sure to hoover in all the areas you've worked in, cleaning away any dust and dirt. Finally, add the finishing touches by clearing up your cables using trunking and adding any rail furniture, such as leg base covers and leg caps. Stage 8. Demonstration. Making sure the user is well out of the way of the stair lift with a clear view. Demonstrate all the operational functions of the stair lift, including the seat, seat belt, foot rest, and directional controls. When all of these have been covered, move on to the safety features of the stair lift, going over these points twice if you feel it is necessary. Once the user is familiar with the stair lift features, ask them to operate the stair lift to the top of the stairs. Now check all features when at the top of the stairs. If everything is OK, head back down again, making sure all features at the bottom of the stairs are working correctly, taking particular care to ensure the stair lift is charging correctly. Thank you for watching.